friends, thanks so much for stopping by. Today we are going to be stitching up a gorgeous shabby chic table runner just full of ruffly goodness. We're also going to be doing a decorate with me spring tablescape. Now stick around even if you don't sew. I have a no sew option just for you because there ain't no shame in a glue gun game. If you're new here, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I love my home and I love decorating my home with all the things that I have made. And if you enjoy those things too, you're in the right place. So please subscribe and become part of the growing Shabby Crafty family here online. Also, please like or comment even if it's just a smiley face because that really helps out my channel. Now if you're ready to get started, join me in my craft room. Although the table runner that I am making will actually be for my spring tablescape, the colors that I use will be neutral enough that I could just leave it out all year and decorate it seasonally around that. So I'm going to be using some, this is just a lightweight canvas that I get at Hobby Lobby. And then this is the natural muslin. Both of these were purchased at Hobby Lobby. Also, I'm going to be applying this beautiful lace to the table runner. We're gonna be making ruffles and I'm gonna show you the sew and no sew option for ruffles on the table runner. Then I thought, I've seen this on Pinterest where you have little wreaths on the backs of your chairs. And so I thought that is a really, really cute idea. So I'm gonna make these little garlands and hang it on the backs of my chairs with this gorgeous little ivory colored ribbon. And this ribbon is almost a velvet. It's just beautiful. So I think that's gonna look really, really pretty. Let me clean this up adjust the camera angle, bring you in closer so you can see what I'm going to be doing to complete the table runner. The base that I'm going to be using for the actual table runner itself, you can see it has all those gorgeous little slubs in there and all those little brown speckles. I just love this fabric. Now this fabric is basically, it just looks like a very lightweight cotton sheet and you could even use a cotton sheet if you wanted to. And let me just unfold this for you so you can see. So the whole thing, it is 62 inches long. And I have this at 16 wide. Now it is on to the ruffles. So I have decided that I want three of the ruffles on each end of my table runner. Because this is 16 wide, I cut my ruffle strip 32 inches because I want, when I gather all of this up, it's just gonna be full and beautiful and pretty. And I bought two yards of this fabric, so I know I've got a long enough length here to just rip and one length like this is going to make two ruffle pieces for me. So let me Snip this at four and a half inches. And then I'm just going to take it and just rip it all the way down. And I always wash my fabric before I use it. So now you can see I've got this long old strip here. So now I'm just gonna take this strip, fold it in half, and then cut it. So that gives me two more ruffle pieces. And look at this, I have plenty of this left. I can start putting ruffles on everything. I couldn't get a good angle with the camera and the sewing machine in my craft room, so I just brought it out here to my eat-in kitchen area. So we're just gonna hang out here and sew some ruffles. Now, once you have taken your fabric and you have ripped the strips, you're going to be left with a lot of excess string. So the first thing I'm going to do to these strips will be to remove the excess string. Then I will sew a 3 8 inch stitching all the way around 
the entire length of the strip. And I'm gonna do that to all six of these strips. That way, that's going to prevent further fraying. Now that I've stitched around all of the edges on all six pieces, it's now time to actually make our ruffle. And there is a gal on YouTube, her name is Nyler Taylor, and she has the most awesome hack for making quick and easy ruffles. But basically, this is what her instructions entail. You set your machine to large zigzag. You insert your fabric. You do not put your presser foot down yet. You insert your needle. Then you take your threads, your top thread and your bottom thread, your bobbin, and you are going to pull those threads gently. I like my threads to be as long as the fabric piece that I am working on. So I'm just gonna gently pull those. I like to have these threads at least about six inches longer than the actual piece of fabric that I'm working on. So now that I have these pulled out as long as my strip and just a little bit longer, now you lower your presser foot. And now with those tails, you're going to hold those, don't pull too tightly, but you're gonna hold on to those and you are just going to zigzag across the tails. And when you do, it makes the most awesome, quick and easy ruffle. Let me put my glasses on here so I can see a little better. And here we go. And you can see as I'm stitching, it's already making a nice ruffle. Now, once you get to the end, you do want to continue to hold your tails, do a little bit of a back stitch to lock that in place. Then you're going to raise your needle and also raise your presser foot. Now, keep your tails out of the way. The strings from where you just stitched, you wanna cut those off. And now you can see, still holding the tails, I can pull this tighter and look at that. Look how easy that was to make this ruffle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish stitching the rest of the ruffles in this same fashion. Now we're gonna get our ruffles attached to our runner. And I do apologize if you can hear my neighbor mowing his lawn in the background. Yay, lawn mowers. So I've already pinned one ruffle to the end and I'm gonna show you how to do that on the other end here. When you have your ruffle, you are going to be able to pull it if I take these tails, let me move this pin here, and I pull it very tightly, I can make these ruffles to be as long or as short as I like them to be. And so what you're going to want to do is take your ruffle and adjust the gathers on it. I take the end, the end without the tails, and I am going to do about a half inch overlap here. And I just make those ends, abut those ends there, and I pin it in place. Then I can adjust while I'm holding this end, I can pull this and adjust these ruffles until I get this end to match on this side where it's too gathered. Just move some of those gathers on down to the end where it's less gathered. 
and then I'll keep doing that until it's all even. Once I get all the gathers adjusted, then I will just go ahead and pin it all down, um, take it all to the machine and stitch it all up. And I like to use a lot of pins when I do this because sometimes when you've got it in your machine, that presser foot just kind of wants to walk out some of those gathers. Now that these ruffles on either end are pinned in place, I'm going to be stitching down the ruffle to the table runner itself. I will be using the side of my presser foot as a guide to stitch a quarter inch seam to attach the ruffle. And remember, if you did the technique doing the zigzag, remember to put your machine back to a straight stitch so you're not gonna zigzag everywhere. All right, let's go. Now that I have the ruffles sewn onto each end, I'm going to be applying the last two ruffles on each side. There will be a total of six ruffles. So using the same technique, I'm going to spread out and make sure that my gathers are adjusted, that they're all even so they look nice, just like the first ruffle. Then when I pin this on, I want the bottom edge of my second ruffle to overlap the stitching and overlap the first ruffle by about a half inch. So I'm going to go ahead and pin the rest of these ruffles on and stitch them all down. Now that I have all of the ruffles stitched on each end, I am now going to be stitching down the lace. And so you can see right here, I am going to be putting the lace over this to cover that stitching. And I have already pinned the bottom of this in place. So I will be stitching down the length of this. Then I'll remove the pins as I'm going and I'll pin down and stitch the top. I want to make sure that it's all going to lie flat. I'm going to take my time stitching one section at a time to make sure that it is all going to be straight. Now that I have this beautiful stitched version already completed, I'm going to quickly show you how you can create that same ruffled look using some pins and some hot glue. This is my sample piece. This is 12 inches wide. And because this is 12 inches wide, I want my ruffle piece to be double this size. So this is 24 inches here. And the first thing that we're gonna do, let me dump out a couple of pins here. We wanna make sure that when we make our ruffle, that it's gonna be long enough we're going to do a half inch, overlap this edge to this edge, half an inch on both ends. We're not gonna start gluing just yet. So we have both of our ends pinned down. Now we wanna hold our excess fabric up and find the middle. And you can do like a little finger press to make a crease there. And you're going to take that middle and you're going to pin it to the middle of your base piece. So then you have another loop here and another loop here. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to come up, find the middle of that, do a little finger crease, and take and pin that to the middle below. And you're going to do the same thing with your other little loop on this side. Make a little finger crease and pin that down. Now we're going to start from this end over here and we're just going to take and pinch some fabric over about a quarter inch. So we're going to lay that over 
make our little pleat and pin it. Then we're going to do another little, about another quarter inch fold over. We're just pinching little pleats here. And we're going to pin that down. I can move, remove that for just a second. Make my little pinch pleat here. So just fold that fabric over to make a little pleat. And pin that in place. Fold this over about a quarter inch. To make a little pleat. Get these over here so I can show you how that looks so far. So you can see so far we have made our little pleats with our pins. And we're going to keep doing that all the way down. And the reason why we put pins, our four pins to begin with, is just so we have even section spacing. So now you can see we have pinned all of our little pleats. And now we're just going to hot glue those babies down. Now to make our glued pleats, we're not going to glue it down to the runner just yet. We're just going to glue our pleats in place. So I'm going to unpin just a few of these because now that I've pinned them, I can see I've kind of like finger pressed them down a little bit so I can see some creases there. So now what you're going to do, you've got the front part of the pleat. You're going to roll that back, put a little glue there, and push it down. Same thing here, you're going to roll that back a little bit, put a little glue, and push it down. So you can see we've got our little pleats working here. We're going to keep doing that the rest of the way down our little ruffle here. I'm going to leave this last one in. I'm not going to take that last pin out. So you can see this is what our little glued pleat looks like. It's adorable. So now we're just going to lay that back down, making sure our pleats look good. And I'm going to pin it halfway because I'm going to glue down the first half, take these out and glue down the other half. So fold this over put glue along the top edge here. That looks great. Take this pin out and this pin out. Lay this back here. Put our glue along this edge here. Place it down. Get our pleats all laying right. And that is easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then you'll just glue your lace down on top of that to cover that raw edge and it'll look fantastic. It'll look just as nice as the sewn option. The garland piece that I bought to do the wreaths with on the back of the chair is 20 feet long and I have six chairs so divide 20 by six and that gives me three and a quarter feet to do for each wreath on the back of the chair. So I just took my tape measure and took blue painters tape and just glued it down, well not really glued it down, just taped it down to my craft table so then I could easily measure out what three and a quarter feet would be. So I'm just going to take that, take my wire snips, and cut these into three and a quarter foot sections 
so I can make those wreaths for the backs of my chairs. I hope there's truth in advertising. I hope it really is 20 feet because I'm going to be bummed if I cut this and I don't have enough for six. I do have enough for six. We just a couple of inches left over. So I took a piece to the back of my chair and this is going to be perfect. So I'm just going to do six of these to the size that I have here. And then I'm just going to put some ribbon through it and use some boutonniere pins and pin them on the back of my chair. And it's going to be really, really, really cute. Done. I just love how this turned out. I can't wait to have all that shabby chic gorgeousness down the center of my table. Now it's on to the chair wreaths. I will be attaching each of the mini wreaths with some ribbon and some boutonniere pins to the back of each of my dining chairs. I love the distressed look on the edges of these beautiful white chargers. I will be placing them down on the table first before coming back to add my dishes. This candlestick was once 1980s gold, but I painted it with white chalk paint and distressed it, and it now pairs perfectly with our shabby chic look in the dining room. I placed floral foam in the bottom of this bird cage, then filled it to overflowing with many of my favorite florals, including magnolia and also lavender. Placing it atop the candlestick adds some height to the center of the table. I'm adding a glass candlestick to each end of the table. I'll also be placing decorations on top of them momentarily. Now I'm using these cute little faux moss covered bunnies that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I think they add just the perfect little Easter touch to the table. And now for my favorite part, the plates. Oh, just look at those. I love these plates. I have a slight bird obsession and it's pretty much guaranteed if I'm shopping and I see something with a bird on it, it's coming home with me. I love the plates. I love the colors in there. I even painted my sideboard to match that beautiful robin's egg blue in the plates. I look forward to spring every year for so many reasons, but one of the reasons is also being able to set out these beautiful plates for me and my family. Our final springtime touch to the tablescape will be these nests filled with decorative eggs. I will be placing them each on top of the glass candlesticks and they're adding height to the table along with the birdcage. One final little fluff of our table runner and we are finished. The fluted edges of the charger blend perfectly with the ruffles of our table runner. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your time here with me today. I really do appreciate it. I hope that I've inspired you to create a warm, cozy, and inviting tablescape for you and your family this Easter. Come back next week for more crafty inspirations. And until then, my friends, be blessed.